sun is out it's a brand new day it's not high in the sky yet so maybe this would be a good time to cut a hole in the roof disconnect the wires i've got some blankets here i can cover the panels with and then quickly we can rewire the panels to the proper spot once that's done i can also take the duct tape off of here and wire that and bring the wires down for the charger as well once that's done i'll be able to get more insulation up there i got my big 4x24 whisper series this thing is anything but quiet but it'll make short work of this here should make it nice and flat and then i'll be ready for the aluminum track and the led lights i give myself a 20 percent chance probably less than that there's just no way there's too much to do before i wire the lights to the switches these have to be attached bolted and wires installed there and here and it's just too much to do for one day too much so uh, all we can hope for today is to chip away at it and do a little bit today so that tomorrow we have a better chance of getting the goals accomplished so let's do some of it I'm hoping that if I open up that box over there, I'll be able to see from the inside. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dry. I want to see where the cut has to be. It's pretty goopy. I bet it's not dry yet. Mm hmm. Maybe. I can see it. Yeah. Doesn't need to be too big. <laughs> Not too goopy. A little bit. But yeah, that's inside the box. So, no worries. Let's uh, run some wires, shall we? First things first, cover this up. Okay. Should do it. Next, we disconnect the wires from the charge controller. off shows nighttime on the controller that's nice because they're covered up there we go soon we won't have wires dangling off the side of the truck anymore that'll be nice Now we're going to pass these wires underneath like this. I'm trying not to get them all fugues. I think I'm going to zip tie the wires to the feet of the solar panels eventually so that they don't slide around very much but for now we'll take this off run the wires through my glands that's my temporary little dealies <laughs> put them inside and by the time we'll feed these things. i don't let that wires do that Wait your turn. <clears throat> okay. So that is going to go through there. Like so. Nope, 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 nope. I always do that. First, this has to go on. Yep. Okay, now we're ready. Attach 
past that there. Tighten it down nice. Do the next one. There's a mosquito chewing on my ankle right now. There's nothing I can do about it. Because my feet are on the ladder. And mosquitoes. to make some holes here. For another project, I'm gonna have to work around that. And we'll go through here. Let's go to places anyway. they go. The keen observer may notice that the charge controller is still connected to panels and what is happening is I'm crisscrossing. I'm going to take those and they're going to do this side. These panels are going to go that side because it's an easier entry point for the wires. They don't have to make a, a, a tight turn. It doesn't matter. It's just the same. There's three panels there, three panels there. But the difference is they're going to feed different sides now. Both banks of batteries wind up getting multiple charge controllers. Right now, I'm just worried about three of the panels for one side and three of the panels for the other side. And yes, uh, as you might have guessed, while I disconnected this side of the solar array <coughs> so I could attach that side, I had to go ahead and cover up all of the panels. And I did that with some of the insulating panels that eventually will be on the roof. It's a bit of a juggle. Now I can take these off yep. and put these over there under those panels while I switch those wires out. I'm glad it's not windy. <laughs> Well, I decided to take a break from all the solar panel stuff and work on the bottom shelf with the big sander. I must say it was pretty difficult holding that thing above my head. Who 
is a heavy mofo. This shelf was like a lot of other projects. It was something that I had envisioned a long time ago, and I was really eager to see it done. Covering up the gaps where the truss supports were felt like a big victory. The next step later on would be to add something to cover this edge here, because the edge of the plywood's not exactly nice looking, but at least it was smooth. And once a ledge was added to it, it would prevent things from falling off. I was also a lot closer now to having a smooth place to put my LED lighting. But enough of that, let's get back to solar panel stuff. So many wires. Craziness. I'm getting so much closer to being done. The last of the panels is up, making a total of seven that are up there, the big 200 watt ones. Then you can see the shadow from that one and that one. Those are 100 watts each. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 1600 watts of solar panels up there. And here's the charge controller. There's a little teeny tiny charge controller that's for the uh, small panels. And then there's two more charge controllers over there. Now before I get letters of concern from all you uh, solar panel guys out there, I understand that I have an inverter and I've got some electronics here that should not be in the same compartment as batteries. I get this, the batteries I hope are going to be located underneath where I build a box for them that's nice and secure and waterproof. So anyways, that's to you nerds out there that understand that stuff. To the rest of you guys, the sealing material that I've started to put up I keep chomping at the bit, man. I want that up. I want it up. But there are two things. Number one, I need light because it's going to be dark in here once I cover up this translucent ceiling. The second thing is I had wiring to do. So the wires have to be in place before the panels go up because that is going to cover up the wiring. So I got to the point where I thought, okay, I can put these three up at least. And that'll give me a chance to get this wiring done. And when that wiring is done, then I can do that. Well, I forgot that I'm planning on putting LED lights up there, across here, and there, and there, and there. And I was gonna have that be one of these switches. So I kind of walk into the shop, hit a switch, and the overhead lights would come on. But you see this is a dual switch box here, and that's because I want two different types of lighting, at least. So I put lights here, I went ahead and installed them, they pop through, they go across there, and they come back over here. So underneath that first shelf, above the workbench, there's going to be lighting that's really directed at the workbench. The overhead will illuminate everything, but this light is going to be a little more direct for here. Up there, they have to be done, which means I put that up prematurely. Because once the light strip's up there, the wire has to go across and underneath to this light strip, up and under insulation to this light strip, and you get it. All that has to be done first before I can put up the insulation. I have a pile of insulation sitting on my picnic table over there, waiting to be installed in the way. I've been taking it in every night, putting it out, and it's aggravating me. So um, now's the time to do the lighting and get that wiring done. There's a few connectors. I need a butt connector for this because it's too short. So I have to extend it, so um, that's on hold. Most of everything else is up there kind of neat. And, uh, you know, I just wired this today. I have to splice that, get that nice, nice. Uh, you know, I like to have things kind of secure and in place, and uh, but that I can do after the fact. The stuff up on the ceiling, I want that done. Now, as far as LED lights are concerned, I've put up LED lights before, similar to this set here, and they come with a little um, remote control. There's the IR sensor, and here's the, the box that you plug into the wall. Typically, these come as kits on this strip. It's got a connector, and then it's got one LED, two LEDs. I don't know how many that is per foot. Four or five little LEDs per foot. When you turn it on, they can be yellow or green or blue or... To get them to be white, it claims that there's a white setting. It's more like for a uh, kid's bedroom or for a nightclub, but this is a workshop. I want real lights, which is why I got these. And this has been a learning curve for me, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. I bought some lights that are a little bit more substantial. 
you look at this one, there's LED, 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 right? These are supposed to be super bright. That's how they were advertised. They were significantly more expensive than the toy LEDs. And I decided, okay, screw it, I'm doing it. I'm buying this because I've got a workshop. It's a man's workshop and I want something really cool and, you know, strong lights. I figured I had enough battery power to, to sustain it. So I go ahead and I order it. And then when it shows up, I realize this is what you get in this package. That's it. So what do I plug in here? How do I turn it on and off? You know, there's some components that's missing, like this little box here that powers it. It changes 110 to 12 volts, which runs this. And it has a, the switch to turn it on and the remote sensor, so you can put that up there. That's nice. One package, cheap. Well, I come to realize that this needs all those other things purchased separately. My initial reaction was to um, send it back because, no, nah, I already spent enough money on this. Now I gotta buy this and that and that and that. And when I did my research, I realized those components aren't gonna be cheap either. But, you know, every once in a while in life, you find yourself really, really wanting something. You know you want it, you know you're gonna enjoy it and use it. <clears throat> you hem and you haw, and eventually you pull the trigger and you buy it. And, you know, you get a little bit of shock when you do that. But when it's finished, it's worth it, right? This felt like one of those things. So I went ahead and I ordered the rest of the parts. Like this has to be cut here, that had to be cut, and then re-spliced with wires here. Same with that corner. The same is going to be true up there. When I go across, I need to cut it, add wires, go there, and all those little cut points are going to be like this. These little blocks right here are going to enable me to connect these. You're able to cut this with a scissor every three or four inches. Put the cut end into here. This way you don't have to solder. I understand the concept of soldering. I'm not too good at it. So this makes life really, really easy. It even comes with a little teeny tiny screwdriver. So on top of that, LED lights, these bright ones, are very harsh on your eyes. So I bought the diffuser, which fits inside this aluminum track. I also needed a way to power them. You know that little black box? This thing here? Well, here's the black boxes for these lights. This is very much like a household electrical box. There is gonna be 110 in here, which eventually I will get from my inverter uh, instead of from an extension cord. I hooked this set up temporarily because I wanted to see these things. So I got my switch here and if I dim it, I got the switch upside down. Look at that. This is daytime, mind you, and the sun's out. There you go. This is illuminating everything real, real nice. Mm-hmm. At night, when I'm in here, I can't tell. It's like Las Vegas. I don't know what time it is if these doors are closed. I can see perfectly well, and I can do all kinds of projects, no matter what time it is. So I'm already ecstatic by these lights. After I install the second set up there in the ceiling, then I can put the insulation in, and I don't have to worry about not having a translucent ceiling, and I will eventually start to have my dream come true, which is a shop that I can work in any time that's cool because the sun isn't blazing down on me. Believe me, there's still a ton of things to do in this project, but for right now, one of the main objectives is to turn the ceiling into the second bank of lights. There's some of you out there that have done LED lights like this, and you're like, yeah, well, they're LEDs, big deal, so what? But for me, I don't know. I get very excited about stupid things sometimes. Forgive me if I seem like a little kid excited about Christmas Eve, but I know that tomorrow when I wake up, I'm gonna have two banks of lights. And they're gonna be awesome. And then I can do the ceiling. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, let's do some wiring. In upcoming videos of my mobile workshop, there are going to be a lot of really cool things that I add to this place that makes it awesome. But I must say, these light strips might be one of the coolest. I'll go more into it in the next episode. I hope you guys will be around to see what else I add to this place, which is starting to really get lit. Thanks for watching.